This video is an update for version 13.15 of the sampling and audition tool called Sample Aid. Now just to clarify some confusion, the tool is a built-in add-on to Secretron, which is a sequencer-like program with a unique QWERTY and mouse-free control system. So you need to download and install Secretron in order to run Sample Aid. And apart from a couple of points, you don't need to know anything about Secretron although it's always there if you want to try it out with your samples. If you've never used Secretron before, this is what you'll see first time round. This warning about novice mode is for first time Secretron users, but it makes no difference to sample aid, apart from the warning every time you start up. So you can acknowledge this and turn it off if you like from the config menu. You normally start Sample Aid by clicking Tools, Sample Aid. But if the option is greyed out like it is here, either you've got no MIDI output ports, which we'll cover later, or Secretron is not in its normal running state. So if this status says stopped, then just click the Run button. And you can see the status changes to running. Now if you click Save at any time, Secretron saves any changes you've made but also starts up next time in run mode automatically. We can close, acknowledge the prompt, restart. And we've got no novice prompt and we're in running state. The run button has changed to a stop button, which we might need later on. Now the online help documentation is under here. Help documentation sample aid. But for now, we'll just start the tool up. Tools, Sample Aid. Now this demo shows the free Secretron LE version, but Sample Aid is fully functional in both the LE and full versions. So now we've got it running, what does it do? It's a tool for auditioning or sampling MIDI-based instruments. It's a simple program, but it automates the process of triggering the instrument with a sequence of notes, which are all accurate and repeatable in length, pitch and velocity. Now this button here toggles the width of the window to save space. And you can select audition or sample mode. The audition sequence helps to exaggerate any audible sampling anomalies in the instrument. So you can compare different models. And this is shown in detail in another video. The sample sequence makes the sampling process fully automatic. Unless your sampler needs any manual intervention, in which case it frees you up to concentrate on driving it. Now this video looks at the computer end of the process using a short speeded up sequence which you probably wouldn't use in practice and a separate video will look at the sampler end using a more realistic sequence. So before we start how do you connect sample aid to your instrument and sampler? Well all these outputs refer to a port number and these are as defined on Secretron's port allocation screen. Now to set these up, Secretron needs to be stopped temporarily. So if it's running, then click stop. Now you can click settings, ports. Now sample aid only outputs MIDI, so we need this section here. So these are the devices found. This list are all the devices that have been allocated for use by Secretron. Now you can double click devices to move them across to the port section or you can just highlight them and move them with the arrows. And to deallocate ports you don't want, highlight them and move back again. And double clicking a port allows you to rename it to something more meaningful. All the devices line up with the allocated ports so you can see the underlying device. when you're ready just click done and click save if you want to preserve those settings for next time round. Then we click run again and we're back at sample aid. Now we can set the port numbers from the drop down lists. Now this first output is for the target device or your instrument to be sampled. So you select the port, the MIDI channel number 
and the program change if necessary or patch number which is required to play the sound you want to capture. There are a few bank select options if your instrument needs one. Now the second output replicates the sequence onto your sampler so it can use the data for auto placing or auto naming each sample. Now the port and channel must be different to the target otherwise the output is turned off. A third output is for providing an alarm signal for group delays which we'll cover later. As with the sampler output the port and channel number must be different to the other two otherwise the output is turned off. And there's a test button to allow you to check the sound levels. Okay back to the sequence. Now the pitch and velocity ranges are set here. The sliders affect each other. So it's best to adjust them from left to right. The priority controls which attribute changes first within the sequence. The note on time can be selected here and the total number of pitch and velocity step combinations gives you the total number of notes to be sampled. So if you set up the calculator section here to match your sampler you'll see an estimate of how much sample RAM you'll need. The current note shows where you are in the sequence and indicates which note is to be sent next. So it's currently showing C1 at velocity 47, which are these two values, so that indicates the sequence is at the start point. The manual buttons move forwards or backwards through the sequence, and the note button sends the current note using the pitch, velocity and note on time. You could use this to check you've got the right program number or for setting the recording levels. So what you do from here depends on how much manual interaction you want and the automation capabilities of your sampler. The manual slowest method is to use this step button or the space bar on your keyboard which single steps through the sequence one note at a time. We just reset the sequence. So at each step you've got all the time it takes to drive the sampler and capture the note. Now the next level up uses this auto section. The play button plays the sequence repeatedly so is normally only used for last minute checks. Let's set a very short sequence. The play one runs through the sequence once then stops. So this is the one you would normally use. The only thing to watch is that the play buttons play the sequence from the current point. So if you want to start from scratch always reset the velocity and pitch before pressing play. Now in auto mode the note delay value controls the pause between each note. So this depends on how long your sampler needs to process and store each sample and that obviously includes any manual interaction if your sampler needs it. So we'll just keep it short for this demo. So this is all fine for single batches of notes but what about groups of notes at specific velocities or pitches? Now typically you'd want to post process those batches in different ways on the sampler. For example cross fading velocity groups. So you might need to pause each batch so you can prepare your sampler for receiving the next. There are two ways of handling them. The manual method uses these hold options and they stop the sequence playing after each batch so you've got all the time needed to configure the sampler ready for the next. Let's try holding the velocity. That's done one batch of velocities at 47 
and is now waiting indefinitely. When the sample is ready, click Next, which will go to the next velocity step, and play one again. Click Next, play one. Now an earlier video shows this method being used with velocity batches to sample a microcorg onto an EMU ultra sampler and cross-fading the results. Okay, the next level of automation replaces these hold options with the new group delay functions. As we've seen before, if nothing's held and you press play one, sample A plays the whole sequence unattended. So first of all, you need to make sure you've got your priority set right for the right type of batches. This group delay setting pauses the sequence after each batch for the specified time and then resumes automatically. Now this puts more time pressure on you if your sampler needs manual interaction, but it allows a much simpler workflow as you just need to stay on the sampler for the whole process. This extra option, delay after first note, pauses a sequence after the first note in each group has been sent, as opposed to just before it. And that can be useful for samplers such as the EMU Ultra series, which allow configuration changes in between the capture and placement steps. As you can see in here, the group delays are accompanied by a visible and audible alarm to indicate when a new group is about to start, so you can take the appropriate action on the sampler. Either way, if you mess up, just click Abort and sort out the sampler, backtrack the sequence as required, and then click Play 1 to resume. And finally, a quick note about playing sample aid sequences concurrently with sequitron sequences. That wasn't the intention, but it is possible as long as you use different port and channel combinations. If you use the same ones, you'll probably get stuck notes. And the note timing is also based on milliseconds and not tempo or midi clocks, so the sequences are unlikely to synchronise, but if it helps with the musical inspiration, then why not go for it? Thank you.